Hey guys, welcome back. So I've got my March favorites here for you today. So I've got a lot of good things to chat with y'all about. So I've got my overall Friday favorites. I've got several skincare things to share with you. I have been trying some new things and I definitely got some standout favorites. Um, I've got kind of a makeup-y thing. I've mentioned it before, but I've really been like loving it in sort of a different way recently. And just anyway, we'll get to that. And then of course I've got book favorites. So if you're new here, my name is Leslie. Welcome. I love to do favorites videos, new at the drugstore, reviews, empties, just a lot of fun stuff here on my channel. So if you're new, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and stuck around for a while. I'd love to have you here on my channel. So yeah, we are chatting about March favorites. So let's get to, okay. So for overall Friday favorites, if you want to see swatches and more info on these products, definitely check out the original Friday favorites where I mentioned them. This is just a quick mention. The Alter Ego Dream Gaze Palette. This is so beautiful. They sent this to me. So sweet of them. And it is just the most beautiful, like, I don't know if you like pastel kind of eyeshadows. Oh my goodness. This would be the palette for you. Great quality, great color story. Um, just a really nice blend. Definitely the colors I have been reaching for like the peachy pinky sort of shades. Those are definitely what I reach for it. This one is beautiful too. There's just a lot of beautiful like duo chromes in here that are just fun. They're just like a little bit of like a, you're not quite sure what you're going to get because they've got all different kinds of beautiful things happening. Just really pretty. The Too Faced Born This Way mini eyeshadow palette in warm ember nudes. This is gorgeous. I love the formula on this. I love the color story. If you like cute little tiny makeup and you like warm, kind of like rosy neutrals, this is amazing. It is blendable. These two right here are like the perfect crease shade for me. Like it's just at least what I like to grab for. It's that kind of pinky, I mean, you can see pinky warm toned combo and it blends like a dream and the metallics are really gorgeous. Just fun, cute little palettes. And Too Faced did send those to me. So thank you so much to Too Faced. I try to always like, um, put in the description like little asterisks, but just so you know, I try to say it out loud too. Smashbox sent these to me and I love these palettes. These are so impressive. The formula on them is just so blendable and like versatile. You don't have to think with these. I mean, you don't have to like be really careful with them. They just blend so nicely. They're buildable. They work on the eyes too. So fun. So these are the Halo Sculpt and Glow face palettes. This one is back to Cali and this one's kind of more warm, peachy, golden kind of color story shades. Oh my goodness. But the formula, the formula is just so good. And then this one is so cute because it's more on the pinky side. Let me show you this one. This one is pink saturation and it is so cute. I love the pink on the outside. This shade right here, love it so much. I have this one on my eyes kind of like as my lid shade and I just, I think it's amazing. So these are awesome palettes, really great formula. Oh, I have been loving this so much. This shocked me. The Physician's Formula Butter Glow Bronzer and Blush. When I saw this, I just was getting it to try it, but I really did not think that I would love this so much. And I love it. This kind of all like together ends up being this beautiful, peachy, neutral, blushy shade that I'm not wearing it today, but it just like seems to tie everything together with my makeup. Like it just blends into like this beautiful peachy, I don't know, kind of blush bronzer look and it blends really nicely into my blush. I just love it so much. It's amazing. And then I would say for my standout lip favorite, I think it's this lip liner that Smashbox sent me. This is the B Legendary Line and Prime Pencil and this is in medium brown. Such a good formula. It's definitely that formula that you can fill in your lips all the way or just use it as a regular liner and it's amazing. It is just this really comfortable gel formula that is flattering and comfortable on the lips, long wearing, just good. Like very versatile and very comfortable. Great lip liner formula. And then a makeup -y favorite, I have mentioned the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Powder in the pressed many times before. And I've usually used it for touch-ups in the middle of the day, but I have been using this more as a setting powder, especially on my forehead at the beginning of the day because I, I don't know, like my forehead can just, it has like a mind of its own of like, 
what it wants to do, how oily or how dry it wants to be. It's just always a little bit of a guessing game. I never know what it's going to do. Um, but I always want it to look smooth, you know? I mean, that's kind of like what I'm going for. And what I have found with this is, so I put on my foundation or my CC cream or whatever, finish out my makeup, but I don't set my forehead right away. I've been kind of waiting a little bit and then I will use this with a powder puff, my little like triangle powder puff from Amazon and just get some of this and kind of press it onto my forehead. And I feel like it does a great job of just smoothing out the look of my forehead. It's just very smoothing and forgiving and flattering. And it really does like go bye bye to the pores, bye bye to texture. I mean, it says bye bye pores, but really it's like any kind of texture, like lines, kind of like little bumpies maybe under the skin or something. It's just very smoothing. I love this powder, but yeah, I've been using it a little bit differently in that way and loving that. Okay, some skincare favorites. I have been trying quite a bit of new skincare recently and my skin has been liking some of it and not liking some other things. But I've got some standout things that I have really been enjoying that are definitely, I think, working for me. So first off is a tea tree product tea tree oil, so, or tea tree whatever. Tea tree is in the ingredient somehow. I think my skin and my scalp seem to really like tea tree because my go-to clarifying shampoo, I get it off of Amazon, is a tea tree shampoo. And it's just, it seems to work really well for my hair. So these are from MetaHeal. So these are some, they have a ton of different like toner pad options and first off I tried the like tealy blue one it's a it starts with an M I can't remember the, the the word but my skin did not like that one I think that one's supposed to be for kind of like slightly acne prone skin my skin's not really acne prone anymore but I can get some little bumpies depending on like you know what I'm trying if it's just too heavy or something so and I have kind of oily combo skin depends on the day but I would say overall combo but anyway, those did not work for me, but these work very well. And they just seem to be very calming to my skin and very smoothing to my skin. What also what I love about this is it comes in this container and then you can buy refills, which is great. And you get these little like, you know, tweezer dealy doos in there to be able to get them out. They're very thin and they have a lot of product in them, which I really like. I mean, you just get a lot more pads in here because each of the little pads is very, very thin, which I love because then, you know, you can, you can get more uses out of it. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the liquid and the product are kind of amongst or on a lot more of the pads. And I will even like cut them up and just like lay them across my forehead and kind of anywhere I sort of have texture and leave them on there in the mornings for a little bit. And it is just so smoothing and calming to my skin. Um, just anytime I feel like I kind of have texture going on, I've been using these and I think they're just very nice and calming and smoothing and soothing to my skin. So I have been loving those, not the turquoise teal ones. I like the tea tree ones. And then this, this just feels so fancy and nice. Love this. I've been trying a lot of Korean beauty and definitely have some standout favorites. But this is the Tear Tear Milk Skin Toner Refreshing Skin Moisturizing and Soothing. So I've really gotten into different toners, kind of layering the toners, lighter essences, just kind of layering more things. It's just sort of fun, but different kind of toners I've been really enjoying. So this one is more of that like milky texture. I kind of like to shake it a little bit and then just kind of get a little bit into my palm and then I kind of just press it into my skin. But it's nice and milky and hydrating, but then it just like sets into my skin so nicely. Ooh, I just love it. So it gives that good hydration without feeling heavy. It is just very milky and hydrating, but not heavy. I really have been loving it. And I've tried, have I tried several things from Tear Tear? I'm trying to think. I've, tr I've tried several things recently. But anyway, this is a standout. Definitely liking that. Um, and just kind of how light but hydrating it is. A retinol product that I am so impressed with. My mom gave me this. She got this off of HSN. I've tried several things and talked about several things from the line Skin. 
And I've been very impressed with the things that I've tried from them. Um, I've tried like their foundation, very full coverage, but really impressive and pretty looking on the skin. But I love their, they have another like night renewal that's a retinol and vitamin C. That's been one of my go-to nighttime creams. But this is a newer product. This is the Age Resist Advanced Night Cream with Tri-Retinol. What I love also, if it's from QVC or HSN, you can go and like watch the videos where they're talking about their brand and the things that they do with their formula. I just really like that. You can kind of like learn some great information about a brand and a product that way. So this says, triple action retinol complex that combines the anti-aging strength of retinol, bacuchiol, and novo retin to visibly fade deep lines and wrinkles. And then Matrixyl 3000, powerful anti-aging peptides that visibly fade fine lines and wrinkles, refillable, so you can refill the little like container. It's beautiful, it is really beautiful. But this, oh my goodness, so smoothing. When I use this, I've been, if I, the nights that I use this, I pretty much just use it by itself. Like I, it's the first thing I put on my skin. I just kind of keep it very simple and I just use this after I double cleanse. And I just feel like it is so smoothing. Like I said, my forehead is always like kind of the telltale of if something is working or not. And if my skin is liking it, my skin likes this. I really just use it like one night, then I'll take a break and then use it another night. But oh my goodness, I just use the tiniest little bit. Little bit goes a long way with it. And yeah, like I feel like just fine lines are smoothed out. Pores are smoothed out. Texture smoothed out. I'm just so impressed. So this and the Murad Resurgence Retinal Resculpt Overnight Treatment. I've mentioned this before. This made it into my 2023 favorites. Favorite retinol or retinal kind of products. I love these. These are my go-tos. Both of them, I like to use them, take a break the next night, use them again. You know, at least like take a, a night break in between them. That's what I find works best for my skin type personally. They have a new um, eye version of this too. Just kind of started playing with that, but that's so exciting because I love this so much. So anyway, if you want a great retinol, retinal kind of product and you want one that's like, you know, packs a punch, kind of more intense, really gets the job done, both of these are great. Love them. I think we're already on to books, y'all. Just getting everything organized here. So yeah, I think we're on to books. So I read the last book, last book, but last book that I read from this series, but this is actually the prequel. So it's like the beginning story of this whole world. But personally, I'm glad I read it last. So I would say read this one last because there's just a lot of stuff that like, it just rounded everything out. You know what I mean? So it's, you get little hints of the story that I think if you would have read this first, it would have kind of like, um, ruined a little bit of it. I liked the sort of getting little pieces and this, this kind of like rounded it out because this came out after the other two or three books. Anyway, so this is Saint from Adrian Young and this is kind of like a, um, not really pirates, but like shipping kind of story. Um, the, the third book that I read Last Legacy was a little bit more kind of crime boss family. Really liked that one. But this one was my favorite. This one had more, it was more about Saint, the character Saint. And I don't even want to give away anything about like who he is. But if you read the other books, this is Saint's story. But it's dual POV, which I really, really liked. And you just learn more about him. There was a lot of heart in this book. I mentioned this about the other ones. I really like these books but I wish they had more romance. This one had the most romance of any of them, so that's why this one was my favorite, but I could have even had more, and especially in the other books. So anyway, it's a YA series. I really like it still, but I would love it even more if it had even more romance in it. Then I read this one. I just really like Christina Lauren. There is cussing and there is um, spicy scenes in their books, but they are just so good at writing humor. And then also like, emotional connection between characters, especially a friends to lovers storyline. Oh my goodness. Just that like pining for each other and just they become emotionally connected and fall in love. It's just so good. I just love it. So this is Josh and Hazel's guide to not dating. I'm almost positive this was dual POV too. I've realized I really like 
I mean, I've known that for a while, but I don't ever know if I don't know if I've ever mentioned it in a video. I really like dual POV. Most of my favorite books are dual POV. Dual POV. So this is dual POV. Why is that so hard to say? And it's just cute. It's like they're friends, um, but then they fall in love. It's like a friends to lovers story. I mean, in a nutshell. This is not my very favorite of their books. Um, definitely Love and Other Words is still my standout favorite. And then probably Something Wilder. I really liked that one. But I've really liked all of their books. This one's another one that I really enjoyed. I would give this one probably like a four star or so. So still really cute, really fun. Then I read um, Helen Shearer's latest book in her, what is this? The Legends of Thesmar series. So I mentioned this a while back. So this one is Fate and Furies. This is the third one. I think there's going to be four and maybe some spinoffs. I'm not really sure. So it's a continuing series that's still going. So the first one I loved, uh, Blood and Steel. Then the second one, Vows and Ruins, I think, that one just felt like a totally different book because it had so much spice in it. It was not for me. Um, but then this one, it seems like she kind of came back around to more closer to the first book. Like it had way less spice than the second one. I think maybe a little bit more than the first one, but it was not the focus of the story. In the second book, it felt like the focus of the story. And I was looking up some reviews and it seems like uh, quite a few other people felt the same way, that it just sort of felt different than the first book. So I liked that this one kind of seemed more like the first one. Because I feel like Helen Shearer in these books does such a great job at adventure. I love the adventure in it. I love the friendships and found family. So good. Ironically, the romance is the thing in it that I don't love the most because it feels more kind of like physically focused versus like a heart connection. This one seemed to have a little bit more heart connection than the other ones. Definitely more than the second one. Um, but even still, there's just like little comments that are sort of thrown in that I'm like, eh, I wish it wasn't, that wasn't said that way. You know what I mean? So that's really kind of the main thing. She does have a YA series that I'm interested to read because I wonder kind of how that reads because I just really like her action and adventure and found family and when there is that kind of heart connection side of the romance versus just really focusing more on the physical. You know what I mean? And her writing is just very easy to read, like super fast to read. So I really like that about it. The covers are gorgeous on these books. I feel like just fantasy covers do it so well. They're just beautiful. I really like fantasy covers. Okay, then I read this whole series. I have heard one person on TikTok talk about this series and I just really liked it. So this is the, I think it's called the Under the Never Sky series. It's a YA series and it's dystopian, but it reads and it was written like well, most, I'll get to that in a second. This one was written in like 2013 or something, 2012. So it's an older-ish series um, and it's technically dystopian, I think, but it reads a lot like a fantasy, especially the last book that I read. So this is the Under the Never Sky is the first one. And the basic premise of it is, you know, the world is kind of in chaos and there's people who live in pods and they're kind of called the dwellers, I think. And then there's people that live outside of the pods. So the pods have kind of like almost like virtual reality and all these kind of like, you know, futuristic sort of elements to them. And then there's people on the outside who are not living in pods and they have, um, some of them have kind of like powers, which is really interesting. So, you know, either they have like a super hearing or supervision or, um, super smell or whatever, just it's cool. It's interesting that they have kind of have like powers. So anyway, this girl um, ends up running into and somebody who lives outside of the pods. Are they called the, oh, it doesn't say on here. Are they called the outsiders? I can't remember. Anyway, and so it's a romance. It's an adventure story too. There's also great friendship and side characters in these books. So first one I would say was my least favorite, which a lot of times happens. You're kind of like getting into the world a little bit and sort of starting to establish those connections with characters. So this one was my least favorite, but still I would give it like probably four stars. And then the second one is Through the Evernight. These uh, covers crack me up. Like I just, 
Not my favorite covers. I just said that Fantasy does it really well. But I mean, this is, you know, from like 2012, 2013. It's just funny to see like the difference in covers and like kind of how they've changed over time. Because even the newest one, you can, we'll show that in a second. So anyway, this is the second one. Then the third one, loved this one, Into the Still Blue. So another factor of this story is that there's these kind of like storms happening. So there's like a weather element to the story too. So there's just a lot of action and adventure in this, which I really loved. I also read, um, she has two novellas that are part of the series um, that I just looked them up on like library apps. And I think they were like maybe 60 pages or something. I really enjoyed both of those. Then in 2023, she came out with another book. I think she indie published this one. And this is about a side character from the other books who was definitely one of my favorite characters. So he gets his own story in this book. And you can tell they like changed the cover that like he's silhouetted instead of like a full on picture of him. I think that's funny. So I like this cover the best, but so good. This one read the most like a fantasy book and I just really loved it. I found her writing to be really easy to follow and even going from the first book to the other ones I feel like she kind of like I don't know really like figured out her writing I still connected to it in the first book but really like the second book she just shined from that point on I like really connected with her writing from the second book on this one so good there's a little bit of like kind of closed door ish spice in here I think there's two scenes they're not overly descriptive or graphic or anything it's definitely more of like a heart connection but I would say it's like maybe a step more description than a closed door but still these are YA and I would say that this one is still pretty much YA um just maybe a little bit more description than the other ones but I loved these series this whole series just really enjoyed it so I'm very impressed with her writing. I liked it a lot. And I liked the kind of dystopian mixed with the fantasy feel. Okay, so those are all my March favorites. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video. Please hit a thumbs up if you did. Let me know down below what you have been loving, either um, makeup, skincare, hair care. Oh, hair care, I've been trying out some things, but I will keep you posted. Like I'm still kind of trying out some stuff. So I'll keep you posted on that. But let me know if you had some hair care favorites or home, fashion, books, whatever. I would love to hear your favorites. Ask me any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer those. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!